Holy Makers. This is my Pirates inspired project for the Tim Holtz Halloween Ideology release for 2023. I used a lot of the Halloween ideology, but I also incorporated a lot of everyday ideology as well. And I checked as I was making it, everything that I used is still available for you to get. And uh, you can recreate this. Although, as I made this, I was not expecting most people to make a project this large. However, I do know that I have some followers who are as crazy as I am and uh, will probably try and replicate this, which is absolutely wonderful. Uh, I put enough detail in this tutorial that you'll be able to do that. But for those of you who maybe just want to make one scene uh, from this make, hopefully this will fit that bill as well. So all of that being said, this is going to be a long tutorial. And for those of you who do not like detailed, you know, instruction on makes, this may not be uh, the tutorial for you, or you might want to watch it and fast forward or something like that. I am going to try and break it down with uh, an index in the description uh, once I get it all edited so that hopefully I can take you to sections and uh, the way I edit it, I'm hoping to edit all of the canon portions in one, all of the treasure portions in another, maybe the tavern portions in another, and the jail portions in another. So that if you just want to make a jail cell, you could just go to that segment of the tutorial and you don't have to bother with the rest of it. All right. But like I said, for those followers who do want to try and make a large piece like this, I have included step-by-step -step information all the way through. Oh. All right. So let's sit back, get your favorite beverage, get comfortable, and I hope you enjoy learning about this epic pirate make. Well, makers, normally this is where I tell you what you need to make this project, but at this juncture, I have absolutely no idea what this project is even going to look like. I just have a jumbled mess of piratey ideas rolling around in my head, and I'm hoping they come out on this vignette panel um, and that they fit on here and that it's awesome. So we'll see. Uh, so the things that I am planning on using, absolutely 100% for sure, planning on using several packets of the barrels. So I have taken two packets already and glued them together to make some big barrels. Now these, when I put them on here, they're huge and they're way bigger than I was planning. Um, so we'll see how that turns out, but I think they're super cool. So I might put some of these old, if you have some of these in your stash, the old crossbones might go end up on here. I don't know yet, um, but I did pull these out because they're cool and they're awesome. I pulled out uh, a bunch of the shape seals with the pirates on them because, you know, pirates have gold. Uh, also the new candlesticks and the metal frame for like the treasure room. If I have a, you know, a treasure room over here, uh, over here, I, so I'm planning when I say over here, I'm planning on having several vignette boxes kind of back to back, I guess, and side to side over here. And one of those I plan on being like a, a jail uh, inspired by Pirates of the Caribbean, that last scene where they're trying to get the key. And so I'm going to have these kind of maybe closing it in. And then, of course, uh, somewhere on there, I'm going to have my uh, candle sconces made out of my one of my favorite ideology uh, items, which is the silverware. So I may, will be using those. Um, this may be for a treasure room. Of course, drippy candles for the sconces and then also for the treasure room. I'm going to need some bones and some skulls to be in my jail and then who knows where else maybe. I uh, will probably need some bottles of rum or whatever else that pirates have around, so tiny vials. Also, these vials, the corked vials, I am going to try and make this one into a cannon. 
I don't know how this is going to turn out and if it's going to look really like embarrassingly stupid or if it's going to be like, no, that's cool. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I'm going to try and make a cannon out of this. I don't know the things that come to mind. All right. What else? Um, ah, so, uh, you're probably, if you're, you know, going to do any of these things, um, I'm going to use at least three packages of the barrels because this took two to make these two barrels, two full packages. And then I'm going to try and turn this into, I think they call them a crow's nest. Um, that's on like the mast of a ship. So I've been trying to figure out as I've been planning um, this project out and mulling over it. So I got some dowels and these are 0 0.312 inches. So a little over a third of an inch. And so I don't want to drill holes in this stuff. I don't have a drill. I mean, my, I'm sure my husband does, but I personally don't have a drill that would fit. And so I've been trying to figure out, well, how could I make a mask? So I bought these dowels from Hobby Lobby and I have these reinforcers from my number eight, et cetera, tags. These go around the hole in the top of the et cetera tag. And so I grabbed a couple of these and I'm going to glue this on the bottom here. And then when I get some things kind of set out the way I want them, I will glue the other one on the bottom here where I want the mast and then I'll trim this and then I can glue this. I can, it fits right in there and it gives me something to glue this to so that I don't have to drill into it and also to glue it into here. And then I'm going to have this kind of like a, you know, it was a shipwreck and the mast is going to be kind of sticking out. And then coming from the top of this, you know, usually they still, they have some that sticks out here. Um, I will have a little bit coming out here and I may have it knocking into a window. So that's why I have some windows and things over here. So it may be knocking into a window over here and the window will be cracked out. See, so that could be going through a window. So that was kind of an idea and I will probably not be using this as large as it is. I will probably be cutting it up and using it a couple of different places, but super awesome, isn't it? I love these giant windows and oh my goodness, such good stuff. Uh, I thought these would be really cool kind of hanging off. These remind me of, of pirates where um, Carlos, the mayor, his wife, you know, she like opens it up and tells him not to be chicken and not to tell where Captain Jack Sparrow is. No, 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 Carlos, don't be chicken, remember? So I thought that was cool. That might be on a box. I'm going to be using the uh, Halloween uh, backdrops because there is such awesome paper in here that I can use. So there's lots of wood grain that will be awesome for things. And then there's that, um, Ooh, where's the one? Oh, here's the brick. I love the brick. So, so good. So there's anyway, there's some great backdrops that will work perfectly with, um, several of the boxes that I'm going to put on this side. And then over here will be the mast with the shipwreck. So, uh, I was get, thinking of doing like the front of a ship kind of coming out here. I don't know that that will actually happen. Who knows what's going to happen at this point, but you know what? I'm super excited. I've rambled on enough. Let's just go ahead and get started making. I can't wait to see how this ends up. So I'm inviting you to come along and let's get making mateys. I'm going to try and document as many steps as I can along the way. So forgive me if I get into this and I forget a step or two. So I started by picking the vignette boxes and vignette items I'm going to be using and then kind of laying them out on the panel. So this is the way I'm laying them out on a square panel. And I chose to use the square vignette boxes and the rectangle vignette boxes. So I have a whole set of both. There are three squares and there are four uh, rectangles. So right here is the tallest rectangle, the biggest rectangle. This is the tallest square. And then the next largest rectangle and the next largest square. Then this is the small rectangle, the small square, and then the tiny rectangle. So I fit them all on there. 
and then each side will kind of be of like a, a scene. So on this side is going to be where the ship's mast is sticking out and then it will be breaking into a window. So I started with this box and so this box is going to have in it, I covered it with some of the backdrop paper. I really love this. And then right now I have drying a, this is a, a an ornate frame, one of the deco frames. And I put some of the gold foundry wax on it. And so it is drying and this is out of the sticker book. So this is one of the stickers out of the sticker book for this release. So that's gonna go back here. And then I took one of the, I think these are so cool, the shattered windows. So I took one of the shattered windows, put a little bit of distress uh, crayon, ground espresso distress crayon on not only the window to kind of muddy it up, but also on the um, shattered window transparency. And so this is drying. I just put some distress collage medium on the back of the window. So it is drying. Then I will trim it. With scissors and it's going to go over the window like that so that the mast can be resting in the window like it has shattered it like this so i hope that that works um and that it kind of is believable so that's what i'm shooting for i also put the uh, the reinforcer on the bottom of the crow's nest so that i can fit the dowel into it and so now I'm letting this dry. So that's going to be this side. And then down here on this side, I'm sorry, I can't hold it up. I don't have anything uh, secured, but I will show you that I did take, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but I did take my poker tool from Sizzix and I kind of drew out, you could also use a pen or something like that. And I drew out the edges around each box so that I would remember where they go. And I also took pictures of all of them. For the latest update, I do have this little window finished. So if you look inside, you can see I have that deco frame with the portrait from the sticker book uh, that I was in the process of making earlier. So I did trim that from around the back of the frame and then I went ahead and put that in there and then I trimmed that the shattered window transparency off and you can see the window is really dirty because I put a lot of distress crayon on it. I wanted it to be dirty and then I added a couple of the bats from the sticker book on here. I was going to use the transparency ones, the black transparency ones, but I decided I wanted these. I want to save those for something else. So I have those on here. And then this is the crow's nest. And so it's ready to go. And then somewhere around here, I have the other half of it. So I broke it so it could look like it's broken. And so I will kind of attach it on just a little bit like this. And it will be over in the window here like that so it's kind of broken off and over in there so I'll probably have to trim this off a little bit but it at least it works that's how that's gonna work so I think that turned out pretty well I like it so I went into the ephemera packet this one with all the little bits and pieces of ephemera and I found two of the poison um, just ephemera pieces, just paper. And so I colored over the poison on this one. I trimmed it off of this one that I thought it was too skinny. So I colored the poison in with black distress and then, uh, rolled it up, wet it, rolled it up a little bit so that it, I also have been working on the bottom box over here, the, the medium square box. So I have covered the inside of it with one of the backdrops. Love this really dramatic black and gold damask. And then I took one of the lace baseboard frames, covered it with foundry wax and then some distress crayon. And then this map is from the uh, 2023 ideology release, the palette ephemera. So you can find that in the palette ephemera. I don't know how much more I'm going to do in this. 
Um, but I did get the window attached to the transparency. Oops, sorry, upside down. And so that's ready to be put on, but I need to cover the outside with something and then get that put on here, ready to go on here. Sometimes, as you know, it's easier for me to video the tutorial sometimes while I'm sitting and working to get the steps in for you. So that's why sometimes throughout this, uh, the perspective's gonna change and probably the volume will change a little bit. I'll try and fix that in editing, but just wanted to let you know um, what's happening. So I've moved from this side with the windows and the captain's quarters to the jail cell. And so I've covered the inside of the cell with just a, just a strip or a piece that I cut off of the amazing brick backdrops paper. I love this. I need several pieces of this. So I just cut a strip and then I didn't trim it. I folded it and adhered it to the bottom. So it's just folded back there. And then you can see that it doesn't make it all the way to the top, but that's okay. You won't see that. That's because I will have, of course, this over it from the regular windows um, base, baseboards. So that's gonna be there for the, the gates to go into because the gates fit in that so perfectly. I apologize. I thought that I recorded this process and I didn't hit record. So let me go over it, even though I've already done this part. I covered the back of the cell with the brick paper and then I cut some chipboard to fit. So this is very thin chipboard. It's about as thick as two pieces of the craft heavy stock. So you can see that it's very thin. I just needed a little stability for this window frame and for the paper that's going to go around the outside. Then I centered the window frame and I drew around the inside with a pin so that when I took it off, you can see where the pin marks are. Now those pin marks are the very inside of the frame and I don't want my chipboard pieces, the edges to show. So I took my craft knife and I cut around about an eighth of an inch around that outside edge so that it won't show through. Then I removed it. And when I get this on there as a door, that craft paper or the chipboard won't show around the edges of this. The next step is to cover this paper with the brick, same brick that is back here. But rem Now remember, I wanna cover this as well. So I think my best bet is to Adhere the paper to this, but measure it so that it's long enough that it will cover over here. And then I just won't adhere it quite yet. I'll adhere it to this so that I can finish up the cell. And then later on, I can go back and attach it to the edge here and add my sconce and add uh, the nail with the key on it. And you can so, see I have the paper on this. It's not attached over here. It's just attached to this portion. Um, to the box so that when I put it into place, then I will attach it to the side of that other box once it's already done. Another quick update. So as you can see, I have cut out a bunch of the bricks from the inside portion. So I cut a bunch of them out and just laid them around this archway and then some of the longer ones here. So I don't know if you can see or not, but they're staggered long bricks with small bricks. And so I use some of the smaller ones here and then I cut some of the longer ones shorter to go across the top and they will kind of be, you know, angled. So to put them on, I'm gonna go ahead and ink around all of them. And then I'm going to put grit paste all over a section. And then I'll press these down into the grit paste. And then I'll just keep going all the way around until I get back to the bottom. All right. So here you have the grit paste, the crypt grit paste. And you can see that I'm kind of putting it on fairly thick. And then I'm taking these. And I still have some on my finger, so... Let's see if I can show you. It's kind of hard one-handed. There, okay. 
kind of like that. Uh, I need to get it a little closer, but you can see that you just kind of push it down in there and then uh, situate it. So uh, I'll kind of pull this one over a little bit and then I'll pull this one over a little bit. But you get the idea. So that's how that's going to go. And I'm just going to do that all the way around. I have them just kind of situated around it so that I can just pick them, pick them up and put them onto the grit paste. And I'll be done pretty soon. Over here I have the, this arch clipped on so that it can be drying. I think it turned out really well. I really love the detail of the grit paste and all those individually cut little bricks. I think that looks really great. So I'm super happy with this. As you can see, I did get the, uh, these are the, let me see if I can zoom in there. Those are the ring fasteners that I got put in back there and then I went around them with some distressed crayons to make them look rusty and old. And then I attached those chains from the ring fasteners. I, no, these are the ring fasteners up here. Uh, I'll have to remember what the chains are called, but I attached the jump rings at the bottom of the chains to a couple of the bones and the rest of the bones are just sitting in there for right now. Once I go ahead and glue this into place and I get the lights kind of up in the corner up in here, then I will go ahead and attach the, uh, the, the gates, the bars, and put the little lock and chain around it. I will add my sconce and then I'll add the key over here. Then up here, I'm thinking, is where I'm going to have the cannon. And so I have that drawing on a dowel. So I just stuck a dowel in there and I put grit paste on it because I'm going to paint it black and then kind of have it, um, you know, I can have it going either way, any way I want. And if I have it kind of going this way with the gunpowder and stuff over here, then I can also have some, I can use some of the bubbles and make them look like the cannonballs that you shoot out of the cannon. So that's kind of my thought. Right now I'm taking a break to work on the cannon. So I had it all grit pasted and everything. And then I looked at some cannons that I had saved on Pinterest and they have kind of this back thing um, on them. And so I used a curio knob and a hitch fastener and the curio knob's upside down on the back end of this. So this is gonna take a while to dry. So I'm gonna set it aside on a shelf to dry overnight. And I'm gonna keep working on the holder for the cannon to sit in. So I have some round um, of the etc. shapes from the new tiles and then I have the square tiles and the rectangle tiles and I have trimmed them down already. So these I trimmed about a quarter of an inch off of. And then this one I cut almost in half and then I cut a little, I don't know, just with my scissors, I cut a little shape out the back end is going to rest in and then up here, uh, I didn't cut this down at all, but I cut a little area where the neck of the cannon is going to sit. Then these are going to be the sides. But it looks kind of funny having them so high, so I actually need to kind of cut them so that they kind of come down a little bit and meet this. Because it just looks weird to have them high all the way across and then have this one low. So I'm going to work on that and try and get this to look not as weird. Then I'm going to cover it with wood this grain. This is what I've come up with for the cannon holder. And like I said before, I used the new Etc. tiles. The one and a quarter by one and a quarter. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The one and a half by one and a half and the one and a half by three. I did trim this down by three quarters of an inch on this side. And I cut one of the one and a half by one and a half in half. And then uh, I used my scissors and my craft knife to kind of, and you can see it's very rough. These are not perfect at all. But just to make some little areas where the cannon is going to sit, the cannon is still drying. 
Um, and like I said before, I put the knob and then the, oops, I need to see if I can get that moved back over. It's been drying for a while. Um, now I'm going to cover this. Uh, I probably will paint it black just so that anything that I don't get covered will, you know, not show. Uh, but I'm going to cut this paper. It's very wide planks, but I like the color. And so I cut it into three eighths of an inch wide strips. And then you can see on these, the circle shapes from the new etc. tiles, uh, I glued it on them in three eighths of an inch strips so that it looks like little planks, but it's out of this paper. So that's how I kind of made it work for the size. And then these are actually going to be the, the wheels that go on here. And so I have this just because it's gonna be pushing it out, but I need to cover this first. I also need to put something across the bottom of this and I'm thinking I'm gonna use those little et cetera spacers. Uh, I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about how I'm covering up the bottom part. So it's a couple of steps, but I used an extra piece down here that I cut off of this one and a half by three inch rectangle piece. Remember I said that I was going to cut it on an angle so that it met with this half, uh, what well, would this be a three quarter inch piece here? So I cut both of these on an angle. Uh, and so I used the leftover piece on each side and I stuck it down here. So it's higher here and then a the little bit down here. And I did that over here also. I'm painting it black and then I'm going to put um, some of those pieces from the spacers for the facades. Uh, I'm going to just put some of those across and I will also um, probably, I don't know, I might uh, paint those black as well. We'll see, but I just wanted to have kind of something that went across the bottom just to kind of give it the feeling that it was more of a structure than just a little outside box. There's the platform up here, which is the small uh, square box, and I've been working on the cannon, so I'll talk about that in a second, but I also covered the back of the um, small box. This isn't the tiny one, it's the small one, but I did cover it. And uh, this corrugated is just some leftover that I had, but uh, I love this from the ephemera, though I don't know what it says, something Valentine. I just think that's so cool, I love it. And really that's the only part that shows, but I did wanna have the bottom covered, so I just used some scrap paper for the bottom. And let me put it on here so that you can see that you really can't see the bottom once you get it on there. So that's why I'm not too worried about it. And then the cannon will go up there. So just so I can show you the cannon, it's not finished, um, but this is the bottle. And then that's the, uh, it's still drying. That's the knob and then the hitch fastener. I added a little bit more grit paste to that. And then I still need to paint it again and put some distressed crayon on it to make it look rusty but I did just want to show how it sits in its little uh, holder that I made for it. And so let me show you that. I'm going to go ahead and put the cannon away over here so it can dry for the night. So these are the round shapes from the etc. tiles. And then the sides and the front and the back are from the etc. tiles. And then those little pieces in there are the spacers from the etc facades and I think it looks really cool I love it super piratey and then I just need to make some finish up the cannon tomorrow when everything's dry and then I'll also make a few cannonballs that I will put up here and that's pretty much it I'm not going to do too much up here I just wanted to show you the latest version of the Canon. So the curio knob and the uh, hitch fastener are, I think they look great on the end there, but they look way more smooth than the rest of this piece because it has a lot of grit paste on it. 
um, and especially the neck because I was trying to smooth that out. So I really piled a bunch on to the neck portion of this. Um, so I just wanted to show you how I've been doing that. And so I usually just get some of the grit paste. This can be grit paste or crypt grit paste, either one, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I just usually take and I pounce with my finger on there and just get some on all over. And I don't want it too thick back here, but I did kind of put it thick around where the knob meets the bottle because I didn't want to see you know too much of the the edge of the knob and that crevice there between the two so I will say that I did add quite a bit around that area and then once you get it in there so you can kind of see that it's in that crevice part then you can just kind of do that with your finger once you get it in there so that's how I add grit paste or crypt paste, whichever one you're using, onto little uh, metals or uh, brads or different things like that to kind of make them look old and gritty. I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna go over it with some more black soot uh, distress paint, which is what I've done on most of this. And you can still see some of the crayon showing through from before I added uh, this piece onto the end, which was an afterthought. All right, so these have been what I've been putting on pretty much everything, Rusty Hinge and Ground Espresso. You could also use Walnut Stain, um, but um, putting both of those on all my metals and everything to make them look old and rusty like this. The other thing that I think that I forgot to go over was that um, to get these on there, I mentioned it, but I didn't uh, actually uh, show it, is that uh, I clipped off the prongs so that really I just had like the, the top of the brad. And then you can, you know, poke a little hole or drill a little hole or punch a little hole, whatever tools that you have. Um, for just the little leftover bits of the prong to kind of go in so that they sit flat on here. And I put a little bit of collage medium underneath and then pressed it down to make sure that it looked kind of like I had put it all the way through. But if you look on the back side, you can see that I do not have anything sticking through. So I didn't want to put them all the way through. Just wanted to have that raised area to make it look like there was some sort of um, hardware that was holding the the wheels together. For my next project I need to make some cannonballs so I'm going to take some of the bubbles and I'm going to roll them around on my fingers with some grit paste on them and then when you open the bubbles you will find that there are quite a few different sizes in there way down to teeny tiny and so it starts off with two really large ones two of the largest ones three of the next largest, and then five of the next. And then it goes down from there by size. So I am going to use all of the, the third largest, and I may go ahead and do the three here and put them kind of on the bottom of the pile because I don't think anybody's gonna really notice that they're a little bit bigger than these. So I may put them on the bottom of the pile and then kind of put pile these up on top just to make several piles of, uh, cannonballs that I can kind of put around on that platform there with the cannon because I need I mean I definitely need some things up there with the cannon and I don't have a lot uh, to go up there so yeah I think eight um, that are fairly close together will be enough so usually when I do this whether it's regular grit paste for making snowballs or I'm doing something like this. I usually get some grit paste on my fingers and you can see and you can tell by my hands and everything that I just really get into this and I don't care if I get messy. So then I roll them around in it just like that and it gets on there and I may do a couple of rounds of this or just one but you can see how it's kind of coating it so it's not that clear look anymore. And then I'll set it aside to dry and I'll get another one. 
and whoops I'm trying to get that goop right there on it there we go okay roll it around let it dry and then I may go over it like I said with a second coat but I want to get a first coat on it and then it usually gives a little tooth so that then I can uh, put a second coat if I if I want a little more. I don't think I want too much grit but uh, I may need a little more than I've got on here at, at the moment. We'll see once they dry. All right that's what I'm going to do to the five smaller ones uh, and then the three second to largest. All right I keep doing this where I think that I videotaped it and I didn't hit it wasn't videoing anyway whatever uh, so I am at the point where I just colored all of these and these were the last two that I colored but what I did was I just took the this was one of the packages that I had left over had the skulls and bones in it and so I used the things that were in it otherwise you could use a condiment cup or a Tupperware or something like that I took some black soot distress paint put a few drops in the bottom of it and then I took the bubbles with the grit paste on it and I just rolled them in the distress paint back and forth until they got completely covered with the paint. And then you could actually leave them in there to dry if you wanted. Or I went ahead and pulled them out and I had them sitting over here where they're drying. I wanted to show you something that I'm doing with the crossbones adornments. They are not part of this release, but they have been part of multiple releases in the past. So you probably have some in your stash if you've been uh, following Tim and Tim Halloween for very long and uh, you know that uh, uh, they're still available so you can stock up uh, definitely if you want them but I put one on the top of the cannon and I have one on this barrel and I'm going to put one on this barrel so I haven't aged this at all and um, I put some grit paste as you can see I can put I put some grit paste on this one to try and make it look like it's kind of embedded in there and one way that I did that was that I have my silverware out because I'm making some sconces so I just took some grit paste on my knife and then I just kind of went around and I just pushed it in to all the little crevices and things so you can kind of see that I I just tried to push it all in underneath any gaps and things like that and around the head and stuff like that and then pounced a little bit on the rest of it so that when I age it, and I'm not going to paint it completely black, I don't think. Um, I will probably paint it and then I'm going to wipe it off so that some of the silver shows through and hopefully it'll look old and aged. Oh, I got but, that one on there. And uh, this one, I did, I put it the same way. I just didn't put any grit paste on it. So I wanted to show you how I'm doing that. And kind of have to be careful because if you're not careful then you will snap the bones off, which for me is okay because a lot of times I will use just the head. I've done it purposely before and I'll take on my needle nose pliers, I will take and I will snip off any of the rest of this that's on there. And um, so you can see how those just kind of snip off that little soft bit of metal. And then I can usually put it on like a tombstone or something like that. So see how that works. And then when you usually get some grit paste around it, you can't see that there's still a little bit left there. Um, so all's not lost if you do uh, break it, but usually what I'll do is I'll kind of hold it and then I will take both and I just kind of gently bend and then gently bend just a little bit more and then I will try it on there and see how it's going. And that's pretty good, but it needs to go a little bit more, I think, before I start on the other side. So I'm gonna take it and go just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna do this side, same thing. I'm trying to support this with my finger so it doesn't snap off. And now you can see how it's kind of bent back a little bit on both sides. So we'll see if that's enough. So then I try it on and it's not feeling like it's quite, not 
quite happy with that. Let me see where I need it. So this arm needs to go down a little bit more. like that one needs to go so both of these top ones are touching now this this one over here needs to go back a little bit more okay let's see how that feels okay, that feels pretty good still a little bit off so that's all I do is I just keep playing with it just a little bit until I feel like I've gotten the bend that I need on these to match there we go and then I'll attach it with either collage medium or e6000 I'm about to call it a night the last thing I'm going to be doing is making a tavern sign and so to do that, I painted this frame black. The frame is from in between the poison chipboard and this frame. And this uh, baseboard actually has been part of the Halloween line for several years. So because of that, I have, I pulled one from a past year so that I could have a sign that was double sided. If you don't have the baseboards from past years just the one will be plenty and you can just make the back plain I just kind of wanted my sign to be a scene from both sides so that's why I I pulled uh, the chipboard from another one but like I said you'll be fine without it I painted them with black soot distress paint I'm going to attach them to this chippy uh, backdrops paper and then the name of my tavern is going to be the poison raven and I'm using this poison is out of the ephemera packet. And then there's one that's the same size that's on the sticker book. And then I'm going to use uh, ravens from the sticker book to go below. So there's my raven. And so then I will drill a hole, two holes actually, in the very top part here. And I'll hang it from, I don't know, a piece of chipboard or something that... Um, I will stick out the side of the tavern. So here is the finished tavern sign. And like I said, yours can just be single sided if you don't have another piece of this from, you know, years past. But there you go. That's our tavern sign, the Poison Raven. So I'm going to poke holes in here and then get some jump rings. And I need to figure out something that I'm going to hang this from so that it hangs you know, like a tavern sign would. So heading over to the tavern side of our project and I'm gonna get started on that today. I'm starting to cover the inside of the tavern. So for the upper area, I'm gonna be using this again. I know I used it in the small one on the front. Actually, I'm using both papers that I used on the small one. So this is gonna go over here. And then below, I'm using that gray crackle that I used on the outside of the box. So this is what it looks like. I went over it with brushed corduroy and then sprinkled some water on it. I also went over that a little bit with brushed corduroy and that's what I used on the inside of this box. The little box, so you can see, I just decided to finish up with um, those papers. And then on this part right here, oh, and then separating them, I'm actually gonna do like wood grain. And I put a little bit of a different crackle. There are two crackles in this year's papers. So I did the bigger crackle on the ceiling and then I'll have this as like a chair rail that's gonna go around. And uh, on this front edge and then the side here, I have a little strip of the brick that's left over and so I think I'm gonna put it here and then wrap it in. 
uh, because I have brick on the, remember I have it on the other side here uh, where the prison is. So since brick will be on this side, I thought I'd just kind of wrap it around and do it just a little ways in on the tavern. And then a quick catch up and a little bit of behind the scenes thought that goes into designing for a live uh, for any of you that might be interested. So I have the tavern portion made and I'm working on the bottles that are going to go on the shelves in the back. So there's two shelves in the back and I made a little thing. I still need to add a few drips with a hot glue gun on the skull, but you can see the basic outline of the tavern. So I'm working on the bottles that are going to go on the shelves. And so here's where a little bit of the behind the scenes, uh, and thought process that goes into designing uh, for a live and for a release. So these are the bottles that I have. Uh, they are the tiny corked vials. No, just tiny vials. So they're the tiny vials. And I've put a little bit of glossy accents in there with some honeycomb and what is that? Espresso. I don't know. So I have filled those uh, and just kind of, you know, ran it around. And then now I just have them sitting to kind of let that dry. And then I'll put the corks on them. So I'm looking for things that I can put on these, uh, you know, for labels. Now the easy answer to what would I put on these bottles is of course to just grab my packet of curator snippets. But that wouldn't really be accomplishing what I am setting out to do and that is to showcase the Halloween stuff and how you can use the Halloween stuff. So I don't want to be grabbing things you know from the regular line when I really want to use the stuff from the Halloween line. So I'm going through the ephemera currently and there are a lot of snippets and things um, but many of the small things don't fit on these bottles. So I could trim them but I've chosen to save these because I am going to do a, another project and these types of things will be perfect for it. So I'm, I'm just setting those aside. So now I'm looking for tiny things that I can trim that I can fit on these bottles. So then my eye falls to something like this poison and I can trim this skull and crossbones and I can put that on a couple of things. So I set this aside. I was looking at this one and I thought I might be able to cut something like this, just the signature and put that on there. So I set this aside, I can decide later. And then I pulled this out and I thought I might be able to get a couple of them out of this. So I might be able to cut just the word owl and fit that on one of them like this one here. Now there are two of these in the Halloween ephemera pack. One of them is quite large that could go across a mini book or, you know, a page or a vignette or something like that. And then there's this smaller version. So just to point out, I'm using the smaller version. And then the other one that I think that I can fit around maybe the square one and it goes on the sides a little bit is this one that says, what's that say? Something, it's some names and Storm Company. So I thought, well, I could put that around there. I can put the owl on the kind of round one and I can fit, and because I've done it before, I can fit this little guy on the little tiny round ones here. And so then I was kind of looking through and I was like, oh, this one was so close to almost saying rum. I couldn't believe it, uh, but I still might use it and just kind of put it like off to the side or something, but it was so close, wasn't it? For the pirates. Um, so anyway, I'm just, you know, I'm kind of going through here and I'm just looking at things. And then I found this 15 on the end of this one. And I thought that that was kind of interesting. So I'm setting that aside. So I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of sometimes the thought process that goes into uh, when we're designing for a release, because you want to use the things that are part of the release and not things that are already, you know, around. So anyway, just kind of give you that, that idea. And also, I mean, you know what? I might be able to on this one of these, this might be cool. Like for a super special bottle. Look at that. The one I messed up on, huh? 
That's cool. Uh, I grabbed a couple apothecary vials and they come with some stickers or they used to, I don't know if they still do, um, but they used to come with stickers. And so I, I had some stickers. This may be a really old set. Let me go get my, hold on. Okay, so this is a new pack that I just got. It does still have the stickers with it, so that's awesome. Uh, so if you decide to use the apothecary vials, you can, that's easy to get your labels. So I have that on here. I have a layer of collage medium on there so that I can then wipe these with some Grand Espresso or Vintage Photo Distress Paint and kind of dirty them up. And these can also go in here or they can go in my tavern, either one. I have the tavern set up and I just need to get the bottles so that they are attached to the shelves and everything else. So this is only one of my two projects. And so far it's taken me probably for four days to get to this point and I'm not even I'm not close to done yet so this is a long project because it's so involved but it's really fun it has four sides and it's something that you can look at and it doesn't even have to be for Halloween you can look at it year round if you really like pirates anyway I'm happy with uh where we're at and what we've gotten done I'm going to take a break for tonight and we'll hit it again tomorrow all right, I'm putting some finishing touches on the candles. And so the way that I do that is I attach them. You've already seen that I attached it to the skull, but now I have attached the skull to the top of the uh, bar for the tavern. And then I take my glue gun and I just add more. Like when I made these originally, um, I just added more. So... Uh, you have to paint this when you add onto it. You have to paint it like you would if you were making the candles. So thankfully, I didn't have to go through. I love that we have drippy candles already made, and I don't have to go through that whole process of making them. Um, so th that makes this so much faster. But uh, when I add drips of glue to anything like that or to this sconce that's going to go in the treasure room, or to this sconce that's going to go outside the prison cell. I have to paint those. So right now, really quickly, I'm going to paint them and then uh, add a little bit of distress crayon to them like I would if I was making the, the candles. It's just so much faster. So it just takes a little bit of paint really quick, dry, distress crayon, and then I'm good to go. So yay for drippy candles already being made and making this whole process so much faster. I wanna show you what I'm doing really quickly before this all dries. So I am trying to cover the outsides of all of the boxes and the tavern. I have the side covered with this. I used some of last year's design tape, the Halloween design tape, uh, and then some distressed crayon over it. On here if you don't have last year's design tape just use uh, some from the regular line uh, they actually have some black and and things that some dark colored ones that would be fine on here all right now um, this side remember is going to be the flap from the prison side so I'm going to be putting the paper onto this and then I I need to attach this to this so that I can pick it up as one piece because I still have other things I need to do and I haven't put lights in these yet. So I put um, a good amount of uh, Distress Collage Medium here where the paper is going to go, but I also put some on this side of the box because it's going to attach to the back of this box like this, okay? So I wanted to have the glue there to glue these two together and then for the paper on this end. All right, so that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna add a little more since it kind of dried a little bit while I'm talking, but that's how I'm attaching these two together. Let me catch you up. I was 
wasn't able to record while I was working on this. I'm up against a deadline and I needed to keep working even though I couldn't record. So I'm going to talk you through now that I can record uh, what I was working on uh, earlier. So I covered uh, one of the boxes. This is the second to smallest of the vignette boxes and this being the smallest one, right? So this is the second to smallest and I wanted to cover it with paper, so I looked through my Halloween backdrops, and there's this one that has kind of this mottled brown and black and beige on the back, and then it has the script, and I really like the script. So I cut it out to fit in the box. The way that I do that is I take my ruler and I measure three and a half by two and three eighths, and then the depth is seven eighths, and then I cut my pieces accordingly, two for each side, two for the top and bottom, and then the one for the back. Then to get it put in there, I take collage medium and my brush. And as you can see, I have my brush in a wet paper towel because I'm not using it currently and I don't want it to dry out. So I will dip in, get my collage medium on my brush. And then for a small box like this, if I have everything cut and inked and ready to go, I will just go ahead and put a nice layer all over the entire box, sides and back. And then I will put the back piece in first, run my finger along it, and then I'll start putting in the sides, tops, and bottom, and we're good to go. Then wet a paper towel or a baby wipe or whatever it is that you use, and then just roll it up. So you don't wanna keep it in water because it gets it too wet, but you wanna keep it nice and damp so that you can continue to use it throughout your project. All right, so a couple of things that I wanna point out because you don't have to get too, I don't know, upset about if your paper doesn't exactly fit. For example, the top one up here, I was just trying to get all the pieces out of the smallest bit that I could. And so I have a, a little gap here on the edge. That doesn't bother me in this situation because I'm gonna be covering it with a baseboard frame. Okay, and so nobody's really going to be looking up in there and they're not going to see that. And the same thing down here, I'm going to be putting things here in the bottom of the box so it doesn't bother me that I just pieced together a couple of things down there. Nobody is going to notice that, right? Especially when you get this on. And now you may be wondering, well, where did you get that? This is one of the baseboard frames, window frames, and it is actually this frame. It's huge and it is the size of the large vignette box. So it fits on the large vignette box, but um, I am using the other one for the large vignette box. I wanted this one to just be kind of some like leftover, like a crate of um, leftover piratey stuff. Um, kind of actually really leftover piratey stuff from here um, from my make. So I trimmed off the top with my scissors and then I beat it up with my texture hammer, and then I put some uh, Distress paint in Ground Espresso on it so it will go down in the little divots that I pounded in, and then I wiped it off, and it stayed down in the little spots so it looks nice and beat up. And then this will go along uh, on the top once I fill this area. So what's gonna go inside of it? Well, I have leftover bones because I didn't want to throw all of them into the uh, jail cell. So I have leftover bones that can go in there. I have one more skull from my packet of skulls that can go in there. And then I thought, hey, why don't I try and make a ship's uh, wheel? I don't know, the steering wheel thing for the ship. So I got this large gear to make a ship's mast. And then I pulled a bunch of hitch fasteners. And I'm going to try and glue these on here to see if I can make it look like a ship's mast. I don't know, kind of the best I can do. And then, you know, I get six of these in um, the an old pack and these are available still, I looked. Uh, so the pack of six is still available at Simon Says Stamp. And I have used with this one, one, two, three. I think this is um, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, if you don't count the one that I messed up on. So this would be uh, the sixth one in your packet and you could put that on there. 
Um, the other thing that I pulled out, and I'm going to paint this brown and try and make it kind of, I don't know, kind of like wood and to try and make the, everything the same color on this. Uh, the other thing I pulled out is a lock. I have grit paste on most of these things, but I thought it would be cool to have a lock on here. The, it comes with brads. I have to put the brads in there, and I am also need to put a little um, distressing over, on, over the grit paste so that it looks kind of old and rusty, but I thought that was cool. And while I'm here, let's just see if I can get... This isn't going to be the best thing for holding this on, but I thought it would be the quickest. I think E6000 might be my best bet, but I need something to just hold it. Maybe it looks silly, but it's going to be behind that crate. So I think it'll give enough of an impression of what it is. And I think these are generally farther apart, but I don't really have a choice. I think it would look weird if I just skipped, if I skipped one. Does that look weird or decorative? Okay, that's not bad. I think that works. Close enough. It gives the idea, right? Okay, ship's wheel. This turned out great, but it doesn't fit in that box now that I have the hitch fasteners on. It looks awesome, but it's too big to fit in the box. So I'm going to probably set it out here with the crow's nest in front of the, the captain's quarters anyway. <laughs> it all works out, you know. Latest update while I am waiting for the candles and the hot glue to dry is uh I made a mistake so here is how to you know fix mistakes that you make so I put this piece on the back of the second to smallest box that is going up here and I really wanted this to be facing the cannon up there and I've really I really messed up because uh, when I was thinking of things to put in here, I didn't look before I put the paper in. And so the paper's gonna be upside down, but no one's gonna see it anyway, so that doesn't bother me. But I was trying to make a space that the bottom of this could go out the back so I can fit that window on. And this is just a little bit too wide, and I decided I would I was gonna put it in here, and I thought, oh, well, I have to, drill a hole anyway for this so I'll just maybe make a, a wider space so that it can just the back can kind of fit out the back and I can fit the light under to light this up then so I took my Dremel and I drilled a whole bunch of holes and then I took my scissors these ones and I just stuck them in there and just kind of moved it around like this and broke the broke everything out and then I realized it was over that part that I just love so much and I was so upset. Then I thought, well, you know, it's up by this cannon. And so I made it bigger and I have to still color it, but I thought I could glue a cannonball in there like they were in the middle of a battle and the cannonball went in there. So that's how I'm gonna fix it <laughs> since I messed up and then I'm working on the hole over here and so the same thing I'm just I just drilled a bunch of holes and then I'm just kind of um, working it out with my scissors so I will color this 
with distress inks and and then I will glue this in there and yeah I think that'll be fine so I'm gonna keep drilling to make sure that I get this big enough so I can get that the lantern in there and then I need to age the lantern and get ready to put that in there. And then, so I have a couple candlesticks that I am going to paint gold. Everything that's gonna go in the treasure room is gonna be like gold and maybe some silver. So I pulled the other three vials that I had in my tiny vials that I was using in the tavern. I pulled the other three and then I grabbed some antique gems. So these are still available and I thought I need to have those in the tops of each of these. So I pulled three of those and I'm gonna paint these gold. They're not gonna be clear. They're, I'm gonna paint them gold and then we're gonna have this on there. So I think that'll be cool. I took two deco frames and I have a bunch of these round ones. You only get one per packet, but I have a bunch of them because I just never get them to fit on whatever I'm working on at the time. So I cut a couple of round chipboards and then I, glued these on with collage medium onto the chipboards and then I attached my crossbones in the middle and I thought these might make cool like kind of gold platters or something that are going to go in the treasure room with these treasures. So I'm getting ready to paint these gold like that and then I put a little grit paste on the frame and I'm going to put some more gold on this. This is going to go on isn't this beautiful? So this is going to go on here and this is going to be in the treasure room, just kind of sitting there like this. So I'm going to gild it up a little bit and I'm also going to paint uh, with distress uh, crayons and things. I'm going to color her. I might use my distress uh, watercolor pencils, but I'm going to give her a little bit of color so that she looks kind of like an old painting that is in the frame and it's gonna just be kind of sitting there as like it's something that they stole, along with one more thing, and that would be this amazing frame that comes with the candlesticks. So this frame is gonna go around this sticker because I thought he looked very piratey for whatever reason, I don't know why. So I'm gonna, um, stick this around there. I'll trim the sticker out and then he will probably be popping out in the back of the pirate room as well. So I'm going to have to do something to this uh, and I'm not sure what that is. I might add a little gilding maybe just on these parts around here. I'm not sure yet what I'm doing. I think that brings you up to speed. I have not decided what I'm covering this with yet in the treasure room on that I have all of the treasure is uh, colored and then I went over it with ground espresso to make it a little darker added the gems on the top of those I haven't colored the lady yet so she's not in the frame I picked that paper for the back of this bottom one I've colored this card and I use my distressed watercolor pencils so you just kind of color it in a little bit and it doesn't completely cover it until you put the water on it. And so I did two layers of watercolor pencils and I dried it with my heat tool in between so that I could get it to look like a painting, an old painting, All right? So that's how I did that. Just color it like you would anything else and then use your watercolor brush to go over it, dry it, and then do a second level. All right, well, here's a look at a behind the scenes mess. So I have the jail and the tavern are here with the stuff on top that's going to go with them. And then back here I have the other boxes with the things. So there's the, uh, well, here's the front of the tavern. And then I have the cannon that will be on top. This is going to be the front with the crow's nest and the captain's cabin. Underneath is the uh, little area with the bones and the... Uh, the cannonball that I messed up on, then the tiny and the, gosh, what's that one? Oh, the treasures. And so I have the stuff inside each of those. So 
I, and underneath all of it is like papers and the paper dolls and the baseboards and everything else. Uh, so, so I thought I would show you, I have put, I had my outline here and it's basically covered up, but I wanted to get started so that I can start sticking some things down so I can drill holes and start adding lights. I, I didn't paint or anything. I just covered it with Distress Crypt Grip Paste. I'm going to let it dry and then see what I think I might need to do. I might go over it with more Crypt Paste and um, a couple of stencils and let it dry overnight. Uh, and I have a couple of ideas of what I want to do on the side, but uh, time is short and I've had some challenges, so I'm, I, I'm way behind and I may not be able to do the things that I want to do on the sides and may just opt for something very simple. Uh, we'll decide that once I get going on everything. So anyway, one last behind the scenes. Even my snacks in the corner over there, my junior mints, my little orange bird. This is the mess I'm in right now. I have all of the grit paste dried from the first layer, and then I went over it with a bit of gathered twigs, distress paint, and I watered it down somewhat and then brushed it all over the first layer that you saw. Then I used this stencil from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. I will put that right here because I don't know the name of it right now. It's kind of cobblestone-y. And so I just, you know, kept picking it up and putting it all the way around. You'll see that it's up to the edge most of the way around, but I left this area because this is where the crow's nest uh, is going to be. And I might still put a the front of a ship there. I haven't decided yet, but I need to let this dry and then I will go over it with some more paint and probably quite a lot of distressed crayons in different colors in amongst the stones because that's what really gives it dimension and kind of makes it look old if you use several different colors of distressed crayons. So this is kind of a technique that you just need to practice and play around with maybe on I don't know, a piece of paper or something like that until you get happy with the look uh, that you're, you know, wanting to achieve. And it just takes a little time and some layers and drying in between. I decided to go ahead and get to work on uh, some of the boxes as much as I can get done. I can't close them up until I get the base done and then I can drill the hole and put the lights in, right? So I can do some of these other things. So one of the ones I'm working on, and again, I'm a little bit stopped because... I pre-drilled for tack nails all the way around. So I need six times four is I think 24. And uh, then I went to get my tack nails and obviously there are not 24 tack nails in there. So I looked in Joann's and well, there's one here, but that's still not gonna get me what I need to do. Uh, so I looked on Joann's and my Joann's is, does not have any. And so I'm really hoping that Hobby Lobby will have some tomorrow and that I will be able to use tack nails on this. If not, I'm going to be super sad. So I'm trying to decide. I will probably use long fasteners and just beat them up with the texture hammer. Um, I think that might be the best thing that I'm going to be able to do at this point. Then, because this won't be lit up, I will be able to glue my cannon into the holder and I will be able to glue the cannon in place and I will be able to glue the cannonballs around as well. So I'm not gonna leave them in this little thing, although I decided it's super cute <laughs> and I probably should have thought of it. Um, but no, I'm just gonna pile them up on top, uh, I think, and, and let them, um, just let them be in a couple places on top. So I need to glue those down as well. And then this will be done and it will just be on top of all of the boxes at the very end. So as long as this is done, I can set it aside and work on the others bit by bit until I can secure them to the base and start with the lights. I can't wait. I'm putting the finishing touches on the this piece. And so I have all of the holes drilled in the boxes, as you can see in the bottom corner there, have the holes drilled in the base for the two sets of lights, and then in all the boxes so that I can thread the lights through the boxes. 
And I also needed something to hold the mast in place. And I had that extra et cetera reinforcer from the uh, number eight et cetera tags. And that is to hold the dowel for the, the bottom part of the mast. And the crow's nest will be broken off of this. So this obviously fits in to there. I will glue it and I will glue it kind of leaning back just a little bit. Have some mummy cloth tied on there with jute and uh, so that that can look like just worn sails. But I don't want this to look like a reinforcer in the middle of everything. So I am taking grit paste uh, on my finger and I have just been kind of going around it and trying to make it look like it's gonna be kind of a mound of sand. So that's what I've been working on. Just trying to make that look kind of mounded sand and then kind of working this out on the edges, feathering it out so that it's not, you know, obviously a reinforcer there. So that's what I'm doing right now. Let that dry while I am uh, putting threading lights through and getting everything secured down. I'm gonna try and walk you through lighting this because lighting a big piece like this is always difficult and you have to kind of think through it. So I have a hole in the bottom of the cap the captain's cabin but the hole is at the bottom back here but I have to put a false front uh, like a little partial wall here under the window and I'm going to actually make it go over a little bit so it looks like a maybe a windowsill and I'm going to set some things on it so the light will be under here and will, things will be lit from underneath and so you won't see the lights then you have to have a way that the lights are going to come up from underneath this panel because the lights are going to be attached underneath the little battery pack from the tiny lights. So this part, and I'm going to use two of them. So these two battery packs will be underneath and then we'll thread, I will thread them up through the two holes. So there's this hole and then I actually ended up drilling two holes back here. I'm going to use the farthest one in the corner. So I will put some lights in here, which will be the back of the treasure, and it will be hidden by the this photo of the lady. And then I will thread them up, and they will go into the a little, you know, just a couple will go into this lantern that will be on top over here. And then I'm not lighting up this. This will have the the top of the mast with the crow's nest breaking through the window and that will be on top up here. It will not be lit up. Okay, so that is light, lights number two, and uh, number one. And number two will thread up through here and then up the back and into the top of the prison cell. And so it will be, whoops, up in here in the prison cell and I'll attach it. And that's why I haven't put the gates on yet because I need to get my fat fingers back up in there and be able to attach the lights up in the corner up here. Then I decided I'm probably going to go ahead and light the tavern. So the lights will come out and in the top up here. And then if I turn it around for you as best I can. All right. So from here, you won't be able to see it, but if I go down here, you can see the hole where the lights are going to come in. And then you will see the wires and the lights. And that's not a look that I want. So I'm going to put... This is how I think I've decided to deal with this. I think I'm going to put this across and cover it with this owl thing. Like that. And then when you look at it, the things will be lit and you won't see the all the whole tops of everything, but you'll see enough. So that's kind of what it'll look like. Okay, so that's, that's how I'm doing the two lights and I'm hiding them. So it's really important that you're able to hide the lights. Very quickly, I needed to make the bottom portion of this box on the front so that this would fit. And so I measured it, it's about uh, seven eighths of an inch by like five and 
almost a half. And so what I did was I put some little extra bits that I had left over that I cut off of the Canon, etc. tiles. And so I just cut them in half. They were three quarters of an inch already. So that was nice. And I just um, glued them in. And then I took a piece of that thin chipboard that I was using and I cut an inch and a half and I measured to make sure it fit on the inside and then I folded it in half so it's three quarters by three quarters and I'm going to attach it onto these two little things that'll hold it up. It's hard to do left-handed and one-handed. Okay, but you get the idea, right? So there you go. So that'll be kind of a shelf. And then you can see there's a gap here so that when I put the lights in, which I'm gonna put the lights in before I attach this, because if I don't put the lights in before I attach it, I won't be able to get my finger down there to make sure that they are attached inside. Uh, so I got this to the point that this will be easy. I'm going to cover it on the front. It will be covered with some wood grain because I think that'll go well with the window and the, I need to ink it up a little bit, but it'll go fine with the window and the shutters that are right there. Like I said, this is difficult to show, but I'll do my best. So underneath that hole, I have the battery pack attached with some foam tape that I doubled over so that it's easy to get your finger in there and turn on the switch. And then I threaded the thick part through the hole and up the back, and it is attached with red tape. And then I put half of the lights through the hole and into the prison area and uh, I tried to save 10 that are going to go through this hole and we'll be out here. So I wrapped nine around here and then I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to stick some foam tape up in there and then try and attach it to the foam tape. And as you can see, I tried to wrap it. This is one of those etc. strips the for, I don't know, I forget what they're called, spacers. This is one of the etc. spacing strips. And I tried to wrap these so that the lights are on this side and then I'll attach this side to the foam tape and stick it up in the corner up in here as far back as I can so that it's, it will shine down but you won't really see it. And then that'll allow me to pull the rest of these out to go ahead and put them into the tavern. All right. I think that looks great. The prison is lit. And let me show you, since I don't have this glued down yet, uh, it's a little hard to lift up because it's, even though it's not glued down, I have all the, but there you can see there's the little strip and I wound them around and stuck it up with foam tape on the ceiling. Nice big strip of foam tape on the back and then it shines down and you don't see the lights. You just, it just lights up the, the area. So um, then the rest of the lights are coming out here and I'm gonna thread them through and do the same thing and put it behind that owl. The owl thing will kind of hide it up over here. All right, so that's what I'm gonna work on next. I hope showing you bits of the lighting helps uh, if you're trying to light your vignettes. It just takes a little bit of time to think through. So I used another one of the stacking strips. They are really perfect. If you don't have stacking strips, I a lot of times will use those bamboo or wooden coffee stirrers and because they're nice and thin and uh, they work just as, just as well. Okay. So I want you to see that again, I really work when I am winding the wire to make sure that the wire is on the back side and all the lights are on the front side. And then you can see that when I put it through from the other, uh, from the jail cell, that there's one of the lights in the back and that's really not going to show, it, but it does, it does give some light back here, which is helpful. I'm going to adhere 
this, and I, I think I'm gonna do hot glue on this. You're okay with hot glue on the wires, you just don't get it on the bulbs is what I've heard. I don't know, I've never gotten it on the bulbs, but I think I'll just put some hot glue and then I'm going to attach it right here to the front edge of the tavern, like that. And then that will be hidden. I know it's hard to tell because it's hanging down like that and I only have one hand, but when this is up and this is up, see, it hides it. And then you just get the light in the tavern, but you don't see it. So that's why you need something, whether it's a, you know, a window frame or something like this, you need something that's going to hide your lights. And then see, you can even come down here and you can still see the, the raven and the poison sign and the bottles and all of that when you are even with it. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and adhere those lights up under there. And then I will attach this on and we will have two boxes lit and we will be able to attach them then down to the base. Now I've begun work lighting up the captain's quarters. This is going to have a string of lights that's going to light up three different items. So one is the captain's quarters and so I have the second set of lights coming up. And this portion that I taped down to the back of that box back there is just going to be loose in the middle here. Nobody's going to see it. I threaded the lights in and then I wrapped them around this. This is, it could be a stacking strip, but uh, I didn't have any more out. And so I just grabbed, because I used uh, one of these to cover the front of the tavern, uh, I just cut off a piece a leftover piece real quick and so I wrapped around that so you can see the kind of where the shape went kind of in the center there so I wrapped some around I didn't wrap uh, nine around this one because I have to put it all the way up the back of the box here um, to fit into the lantern that's going to be on the top up here so I only did I think six and then I threaded it back out the back so now I'm going to attach this down here and then I can start putting that shelf in and you can see I covered it with some paper so then the shelf will go in and it will cover that up and I'll start putting some things on the shelves I don't think I'm going to be able to do this single-handedly but as you can see I have collage medium on the top and the front and the top and the front of the two little bits that I put on the side. I also put it down here. I have these secured and then the shelf or the bottom of the window is going to go in and onto those brackets and then down. There we go. And I'm not worried that this is uh, showing through because I have uh, another piece that I'm probably going to put over that. The last step of the lights is to take the string of lights from the captain's cabin out the back corner that it came in, and then it needs to go over and into the back corner here. And this is the treasure room. And then it needs, I wrapped it around just a little piece of the stacking strips that I had and then it went back out and you need to leave enough that it can go up the back which this one is going up the back of the treasure and then you need to have enough that it can go into the box and have two lights that will go into the little lantern. So I will try and show you that as soon as I get this box uh, adhered down in place and I get these here and they will mostly be covered up. I will probably put a little bit of the mummy cloth and then this is going to go kind of here. So you won't really see them. Before I put the window on, I wanted you to be able to see what was behind it. So I have the captain's portrait. I have a fancy bottle, 
I have an old book and then I have a candle stand with a candlestick on top, map in the background. And then you can see I added that extra over the little shelf that I made. I added an extra piece of thin chipboard with a piece of the wood grain. And it's a little bit darker uh, than normal because I just inked it with gathered twigs or walnut stain, one of the two. Anyway, a dark brown. Yeah. And so I'm going to go ahead and attach this. And you can see through the shattered glass... Uh, you can still see some of the things that are in there. As I'm finishing up, I'm putting this, uh, the cannon piece on the top, and it's pretty much closed all the way around, including on top back here. But um, I don't have enough. This isn't wide enough to cover those gaps right there. And so just to be sure that Nothing shows if I don't want it to. I just covered a real thin piece of chipboard with some of the same crackle, and I'm gonna just glue it to the underside of that so it kind of hangs down and just covers that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna put some of the mummy cloth around just to you know, be sure that it's covered, but that way I don't have anything kind of sticking out that shouldn't be. I have pretty much everything in place and I'm just letting it dry right now. I ended up putting the wheel up here because there was just too much going on down here. But I did want to add one other thing. So I'm going to take the broom and instead of making an old graveyard plant out of the end of it, I'm going to actually make some, you know, like dead plants in the front of the captain's quarters so I think that's the last thing I'm going to do I need to let everything dry and then tomorrow after work I'll do a walkthrough well I finally put all the finishing touches on this piece it's finished it's all together and so let's talk about some of the things I really love for one thing I'm really surprised at how well that the cannon and the little cannon holder turned out I think that's really great and I love that it's just three pieces of Tim Holtz everyday products put together to make something completely different. I really love that about ideology projects is that we can think outside the box and make something completely different than what it was intended to be. So this is really fun of course tons of grit paste on it, paint and uh, love these little uh, crossbones adornments. I think the bubbles made some fabulous cannonballs and I was really grateful to have one to fix that mess up up here uh, in the top part of that um, box. And I just still so love that Valentine, um, what is it, Flock to Valentine advertisement. That's so fabulous. Then we have the ship's captain's wheel made out of the gear, the hitch fasteners, and one of those crossbones, a little bit of grit paste, and you're good to go. So that's a lot of fun as well. Then just being able to build this out of all the vignette boxes, the square and the rectangle, you know, and that's, you know, pretty much it for the structures. So that was great to be able to use one set of each of them. All right, let's move on to, I think, one of my favorite scenes, just because it is really so reminiscent of Pirates of the Caribbean. I really love this. So this fabulous paper that came this year with the brick, isn't it wonderful? Now, I am all for using my brick stencil and the grit paste and then going through all the steps, but can I tell you <laughs> how much easier it made this section to have this paper even though I cut apart all the little bricks and did this whole thing around the uh the baseboard window that was even fast compared to having to do all of the grit paste and waiting for it to dry and do all of that absolutely wonderful creative convenience I love that so then we have these rusty crusty gates uh we've got the 
little uh the bones and the skull we've got the wonderful lock with the little chain then we've got the the fasteners and the chain hanging down there um we have our little key hanging over here and then of course we have that oh the sconce i love those silverware sconces i just can't get enough of them so awesome and then enough room up here to hide those lights so that we don't have to worry about those turning over to our tavern this is well this is a favorite too i really love how the tavern turned out so hopefully you can see all the way in there so of course at the top i used that large six inch bracket etc um trim and then I covered it with the Owl Cigar piece from the Ephemera pack. Nailed it in tons of brads and tack nails that I used on this and even the tiny fasteners. A little bit of design tape. We've got the, the baseboard door back here. We've got some more etc. trim in there for the shelves. All kinds of the tiny vials on the shelves and how wonderful is it that we have the skulls and the drippy candles that we can put together with just a little bit of extra hot glue wax that just kind of drips down then you can paint it and it looks like it's been there for ages doesn't it so i don't know if you can see in there but all the detail of the all the different vials and things that we have in there and they just look like they've been in there forever so this is obviously a town that hasn't been uh used much we have a couple of spiders hanging around back there and then also up here and then the name of course of our tavern the poison raven we have a double-sided sign but as i explained in the tutorial it could be single-sided and that would be absolutely fine held on by half of a a bracket, um, et cetera, trim. And then playing off the name, we have a poison and then raven back up here as well. Love how the barrels, the half barrels, if you glue them together, they look like a whole barrel there. So wonderful. And a couple more of those crossbone adornments on there. And then just, um, I used two, as you saw, I used two of the pinking, pinked trims and then covered it with paper to make the top of the bar and a couple more of the bottles. And then this looks like some kind of note that a pirate would have read uh, and then taken off to go find some treasure or something like that. So just really love the feeling of the uh, abandoned tavern. Everything was abandoned in this town, it feels like. So on this side, you can, can see the back of this, but you could just as easily have just covered it with some of that crackle paper and no one would think anything of it. We have the treasure room, which you really can't see the light of the treasure room very well because I did kind of have to cover it with some of the mummy cloth, but there is a light that is in there, shines a little bit. You've got all the treasures kind of spilling out here anyway. I added some antique gems. I really love how they added some sparkle. Uh, to not only the tops of the tiny vials instead of the corks, but how they just added some sparkle when I tucked them into little empty spots. Got a candlestick here and then another sconce. This one made out of a spoon uh, back in the back. This beautiful painting um, that I colored with the Distress um, watercolor pencils. Didn't use one of the ornate baseboard frames. Added a little uh, star onto the front of this uh, tiny vial. And so lots and lots of uh, riches. And oh, well, hello, Exitensio. We're looking at something that was inspired by your namesake.
right, and here we have a crate, and this crate has some bones coming out of it. And really, this was mostly like a leftovers uh, crate, and so I had to find some things to, to put in it. So I, I just put the leftover bones, um, an extra skull in there. I used this cool key hole or key um, lock. And then in there, I have one of the um, lanterns, and that's pretty much it. A little bit of mummy cloth, that's pretty much it. And then if you look carefully, you can see that hole where the cannonball is coming through up on this corner uh, where I messed up. So, and you can see the light that comes out of that. Love this front kind of uh, rustic crate, locked up kind of nailed up crate um, that was actually just half of a huge window. So I love that. <clears throat> and then as you're coming around here to the captain's quarters, this is so cool. This is uh, the bottom part of that new broom. I thought these looked like kind of dead uh, bits of plants uh, that might be growing somewhere along the, you know, coast area, um, you know, grasses and, and, and bit, bits of dead plants that you would find. So I just put a little bit of uh, glue and stuck them in and held them in place until they stood up on their own. And so that's on the side of, this is the captain's quarter side. So you can see I have it kind of down around there. I have it around the, the bottom of the mast and then over on this side. And looks like the uh, shutters from the captain's quarters are falling off. Of course, those windows are shattered. We have the mast that is stuck in the sand and has broken. And then the top of the crow's nest has broken the window up here. Uh, we have a lovely portrait in a um, one of the deco frames up in there, a couple of bats coming out. And then down here, you can see it better in person. It's very hard to show, but we have the captain in, and his portrait is in there. And then you can see there is a bottle right here. And you might be able to see it a little bit that way also. There's a bottle in there. There's also a, a large book right here. And if you're looking this way, you can just see a candle and a candle stick that way. So that any way that you look, you can see any of that. And behind it, backing all of it, is that beautiful map with the gold frame all around it. So I hope that you can kind of see some of that as I turn it around. And then here we come, we're back around at the jail cell. I really had so much fun just pouring my creativity into this. This really did take me a very long time. This probably took me about a week to make. And for me normally, um, my makes don't take that long, but I just kept finding things and adding little bits of either, uh, you know, di distressed crayon or distress inks or something to age things. Or I would find, you know, oh, that needs some grit paste or, oh, that needs a little bit of mummy cloth or, oh, that needs something here and there. Like I'm just looking right now and I'm thinking, oh, I need to uh, put something on those. They look too new. And so see, the longer that you look at something, you can, you can always find something else more that you want to add, right? But you have to stop somewhere. So uh, I have stopped, but uh, I know that this was a very involved tutorial. So, and it was very long. And this even last explanation was very long. So if by chance, I left out anything, or if you have any questions about anything that I didn't cover, or that maybe didn't make sense the way that I explained it, um, please contact me. You can ask a quick question in the comments for this video, but uh, if it's something that you really want a good explanation for, I would highly recommend that you um, go to my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com and then there is a contact section in the right upper, uh, the upper right corner. 
and you can contact me that way and I can give you uh, maybe a more detailed explanation, additional pictures, uh, something like that to help you out. All right. I want you to know I am so thankful that you made it to the end of this video, even if you fast forwarded through most of it. Thank you so much for staying to the end, no matter what you did, whether you watched the whole thing or even fast forwarded through it. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support. So, and with that, Existencio and I both want to wish you a very creative day.